Hey, what's up guys? Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. Here in today's video, I want to share with you my favorite chord progression. So my favorite chord progression consists of the four most commonly used chords that you hear in just about every single pop song that's on the radio today. So the most cliche variation of these four chords is known as the 1-5-6-4 chord progression. And then the second most cliche variation of these four chords is known as the 6-4-1-5 variation. So my favorite chord progression, it does consist of these four chords, but it's not either of those two super cliche variations. I have nothing against those cliche variations of these four chords, but that's just not my favorite chord progression. My favorite chord progression arranges these chords a bit differently and in a way that you probably don't hear quite as often. So I have a very specific reason as to why this chord progression is my favorite. It has special meaning to me. And in this video, I'm going to share that with you. I'm going to share with you also what is meant by all this one chord, five chord, six chord stuff. And also at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a video backing track that allows you to jam along with this chord progression. And I'm going to give you a fretboard diagram on the top of the screen and chord charts that change as the chords change. So you have a visual aid to practice and jam along with as you jam along with the backing track. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. All right, so let's first talk about what is meant by this one chord, five chord, six chord, all that stuff. So if you look at the chords that are found in any given key signature, you're always going to have three major chords, three minor chords, and one diminished chord. Each of these chords corresponds with one of the seven notes that make up the key scale. So for the key of G major, for example, your key scale, your G major scale, is going to be G, A, B, C, D, E, and F sharp. You have those seven notes. So for each of those seven notes, you have a corresponding chord. You have a G major chord, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished. No matter what key you're in, you're always going to have three major, three minor, one diminished. So when you hear one, five, six, four, all that means is that G major is your one chord. D major is your five chord. It's built off the fifth degree of the scale. E minor is your six chord. It's built off the sixth degree of the scale. And then C major is your four chord, built off the fourth degree of the scale. So this is the super, super cliche chord progression, the one, five, six, four chord progression in the key of G major. So that chord progression is super common. I'm sure you've heard it before. It's used in thousands of songs. Um, there's actually a bunch of YouTube videos that make fun of that chord progression. There's a band called Axis of Awesome. They made up a song that's called Four Chords, and they just play like 100 songs right in a row that uses that exact same chord progression. Super, super common, super cliche. It works, though. It's just one of those chord progressions that just tends to work, and I don't know. That's how you make a hit song. If you want to make a hit song, do a 1-5-6-4 uh, chord progression. You're probably going to get it on the radio. It's that common. So the second most common variation of these same four chords is known as the 6-4-1-5 variation. So in this key, E minor would be your six chord, C major is your four chord, G major is your one, D major is your five. So that sounds like this. So that's super common too. So you could arguably say that that is the key of E minor as opposed to G major. Although E minor and G major, they share the exact same seven chords. They share the exact same seven notes. It's a relative major minor pair. For every major key, you have a relative minor, which shares all the same stuff. For every minor key, you have a relative major, which shares all the same stuff. So some people will rearrange the chords a bit differently, making the E minor chord to be the one chord. So if you do it that way, then you have your chords numbered like this. Sometimes it even gets a bit more confusing. When you rearrange your numbers for a minor key, they base it off the scale formula for a minor scale, which is 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 6, flat 7. Then you have your chords numbered like this. Things can get confusing when you rearrange the uh, numbering for minor keys. So if at all possible, I try to keep the numbering consistent and based off the major key variation of the key signature. So for the purposes of this lesson, we're just going to number the chords based off the major perspective of this key. So we're just going to say this is the key of G major. So even if you play a chord progression that starts out on an E minor chord, ends on an E minor chord, has a sad sound to it, is therefore a minor chord progression, 
I'm still going to number it as if it was from the major perspective. So my favorite chord progression uses those exact same four chords, but arranged in a way such that it starts on the four chord. So it doesn't start on the one chord. It doesn't start on the six chord. So just going off the starting chord, you can't necessarily tell if it's a major chord progression or a minor chord progression. It's kind of up in the air since it's starting on the four chord. So it starts on the four, it goes to the one, it goes to the five, it goes to the six, and then it just keeps repeating. So it sounds like this. cool thing about that chord progression is it just wants to keep going. It just has this feeling that it just wants to keep on going and going and going. You saw how I just ended there on the C, the C chord, the four chord in this key. That's not the one chord. It's not the six chord. It's the four chord. If I were to just end it right there on that C, it didn't sound right. If I would have just abruptly thrown in a G major chord and say, okay, we're done now, or thrown in an E minor chord and say, okay, we're done now, it would kind of disrupt this flow. So starting on the 4, moving to the to the 1, then to the 5, then the 6, it has this just looping feeling that just, it, it's, I don't know, that's the best way I can explain it. It just keeps on going and going and going and going, and um, that's one of the reasons I like it. So it also has like this mixture of happy and sad to it. So it's not necessarily a G major chord progression, it's not necessarily an E minor chord progression, it's a little of both. It doesn't start on the G major, it doesn't end on the G major, it doesn't start on the E minor, it doesn't end on the E minor, so you can't really say that's definitely G major, and you can't really say that's definitely E minor. It's kind of just up in the air, so could be major, could be minor. It's a mixture of happy and sad, it has this looping effect to it. Alright, so just a quick backstory as to why I like this chord progression so much, and why it has special meaning to me. So, in 2011, I was at a fish festival with my cousin Christy. So I wasn't really a big fish fan prior to this festival. I'd seen them live a few times, but they just never really did it for me. I just couldn't get into them. But after I went to this music festival, something happened. A switch flipped in my head, and I was just a gigantic fish fan. I've loved fish ever since then. To this day, I'm still a big fan of them. My cousin Christy, biggest fish fan I ever met. She was at like 180 shows or something like that. She knew so many facts about fish. There's like a... There's a thing with the uh, fish following. They like study. They study. They're like, okay, back in 1994 at the October show, you know, they did this song, but they didn't do this in this certain way. But then they transitioned into this song, and that was the only time they ever did that. So, like, she knows all these facts about fish. She knows. I've never met a bigger fan of a band in my entire life than my cousin Christy. Huge, huge fish fan. So, her and I were standing there watching. Uh, fish jam and they played this one song called mound and at the end of the song trey anastasio just ripped this three minute long solo that just blew my mind i was mesmerized by this solo i don't know why i was specific why this particular solo did it for me like that because you know trey is always playing solos pretty much every fish song has a like a five minute long guitar solo in it but this specific solo just kind of blew my mind it gave me the chills it just I don't know why, it just it just did it for me, you know? But uh, my cousin Christy, she pointed out to me, she's like, well, that's the only time that uh, that Trey ever did a guitar solo at the end of that song. Normally, that song has a keyboard solo at the end. So the, the way that Mound is written is that there's a keyboard improv that it's like a minute long, and that's the end of the song. That's how it always goes. I went and I listened to like 50 different older versions of the song Mound, all these different live versions. I couldn't find one single version that had a guitar solo at the end. So I happened to witness the one version that had a guitar solo at the end out of all of the previous versions. She told me that the reason he did that is because he made a mistake. And he made a mistake and then he got mad. So as a result of him getting mad, he just ripped a really, really awesome solo. I didn't notice that he messed up. As far as I could, as far as I could see, Fish, 
they didn't make a single mistake. They were flawless. But apparently, uh, Trey, his timing was off a little bit or something like that. And after I went back and listened to this version of the song like 10 times, it took me like 10 times of listening. I was like, oh, okay, minor little mistake there. Like, super minor mistake. I would have never noticed it if she wouldn't have pointed it out to me. But apparently, Trey Anastasio made a mistake at this live version of the song that I happened to see. His mistake caused him to play this really awesome guitar solo that blew my mind. I was like five feet away from him at the time. I thought that was pretty cool. So the reason that this chord progression and this song have such special meaning to me is because my cousin Christy actually passed away. So she passed away a few years ago, and I'm not I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm not trying to bring the vibe down. Um, she wouldn't want sad vibes, so don't please don't leave any comments like I'm sorry for your loss. Just don't don't do any of that. She wouldn't like that. That's not what this is about. I'm making this video as kind of like a tribute to her because she was such a big Fish fan and this particular song had such an impact on me. And, you know, when I go and I actually went and tried to figure out why I liked this song so much. Why did I like this solo so much? And I listened to, uh, I figured out the chords of the chord progression. And I was like, oh, okay, it's just the one, five, six, four. He's just using the one, five, six, four chords, but just arranged in this way that I'm talking about. And that's pretty cool, you know? So she pointed this fact out about fish to me and then it made me go and kind of study what was going on in the chord progression which i've come to realize is just a different variation of the one five and six and four chords which i'm now sharing with you guys and every time i hear this chord progression or every time i play this chord progression it just kind of reminds me of my cousin christy it just kind of it just brings back memories i remember that festival i remember that specific moment i remember her telling me you know this fact about fish it's just a, yeah, it's a, it has meaning to me, you know? So, Christy wouldn't want you to, you know, leave sappy comments or anything like that, but what she would like is if you guys jammed along to the backing track that I leave at the end of this video, you know? If you decide to jam along with the backing track at the end, I'm at the point now where I put a video out on YouTube, I get a couple thousand views, maybe like 3,000 views. If a couple hundred people are jamming along to some backing track that is directly inspired by fish... Um, directly inspired by the knowledge that she gave me about this specific song, which I'm now sharing with you. There's just something cool about that. And I think that she would think that was really cool. So if you guys want to jam along to this backing track, then it would be in memory of my cousin. So I think she would like that. So that's what this video is about. That's why I like that chord progression. That's why this variation of those four super common chords have such special meaning to me. And that's that. So uh, check out the backing track and uh, have fun with it. See you guys next time.